right, guys, welcome back to the shop. I'll keep this as cheerful as I can. I'm kind of pissed off right now because I stuck time into this cylinder. This is the aftermarket uh, 064 cylinder, the 56 millimeter big bore. This is gonna show you right now why I hate aftermarket parts. And this one really pisses me off. I wasted time. I should have checked this myself though, but I'm going to share the best bit of two stroke knowledge that I have in my bag. 100% because I do want people to learn from my channel. I want to help people out. This is something that maybe other guys are sharing, but I highly doubt it for some reason. A lot of channels want to make it seem like they're the only ones that can do this stuff. It's so hard. And if anybody that knows what I'm about to tell you has shared it, hey, uh, that's really cool. I really do mean that. If, if people have shared this, that's really cool because it's something I'm actually kind of reluctant to share, but... I thought, you know what, Let's. we're here to help, right? I do these videos to help. I'm never gonna ask this, and I never have asked this. If you could like this video and subscribe if you don't subscribe. I took a break from YouTube for a bit, and it's, it's kind of screwed me in the algorithm. So just this once, this is the only time I'm ever gonna ask this. I've never asked it before. Please like, subscribe, all that stuff YouTubers say. To just to try to boost me up in the algorithm a little bit. This one, is, if you have not been explained this, this is going to help you guys out so much. Uh, old school two-stroke guy taught this to me, a, le a legit legend. And I have lived by this ever since. It's the first thing I look at when I'm going to do a build if I haven't messed with a particular model yet. Before I put a degree wheel on it, before anything else, hand to God, this is the first thing I look at. And... I call it a rule because I'll be the first guy to tell you that you can break all kinds of rules in this game. Hell, I do it just to prove people wrong. This one, if you break this rule, you're going to lose power. Your, your saw is not going to run as well. So this is the four, 460 bottom end. This build will work. I have determined with enough machining and enough screwing around, I can get a uh, 460 or uh, 064 cylinder on a 460 it will work without swapping the crank however I should have checked this before I started you can do this with the cylinder on the saw it doesn't matter this is just a rule this is a visual rule that you don't need any numbers you don't need any calculations none of that stuff it's so simple when someone explains it to you I'm gonna explain why it matters and hopefully it helps somebody out when your intake starts to open you can simply do this. You can do it on the saw by looking at your intake timing through your intake right when it starts to crack open. So where are you looking right there? Right when it starts to crack open. That'd be better if I had a flashlight, but let me see if this helps. Sorry. Okay, yeah. So right when it starts to crack open like that, that's your intake timing. That's how we measure intake timing. After bottom dead center, before top dead center. I'm gonna shove a piece of wire in here and that's just gonna hold it. So that's basically right when the intake is starting to crack open. Do this on any saw. Right when your intake starts to crack, look where your top ring is. If you have one ring or two, it doesn't matter. Your top ring is what you're concerned about. You have to have that top ring above the roof of your exhaust. So you see how far below the roof of the exhaust is? This saw is ne would never run good. From factory, this is how it came. I did do some porting to the intake. I think if I mentioned that in my last video, I said this intake from, from factory was big. And I should have looked at this, but I did not lower it. This was not lowered. I squared it off, but it was huge, just right out of the, the box, right out of the packaging. And I thought, damn, that's a big intake, which doesn't bother me. But when a saw breaks this rule, and I'll show you on the cutaway why it matters, this thing will never run good. It'll run. It'll just, you won't have that legit performance. So here's a good way to explain this. A 200T, when the intake starts to crack open, your top ring is barely above the roof of your exhaust. That's why I've said in the past, I never explained why though, you don't want to lower your intake on a 200T or raise your exhaust. You need to pay attention to this. A 200T is so close right out of the box that if you do one or the other too much, your, your ring will be below your exhaust roof and you're screwing yourself. 
that's why I say you can't just take it aside, lower the intake automatically on a cylinder, raise the exhaust automatically. This is so important. Let's look at the cutaway here. So the, the ring in relation to your exhaust port and the top of the piston in relation to your, the roof of your exhaust are different. When we measure exhaust port timing, your piston is coming down, you look for the ray of light, you're getting your port timing number right when you see that ray of light, that goes off the top of your piston. That is different than compression. Compression is built on the upstroke. Remember suck, squeeze, bang, blow, intake, compression, that's on the upstroke. Power, exhaust, used to call it ignition, exhaust, on the downstroke. So on the upstroke, you're taking in your air fuel mixture once the ring is above the roof of your exhaust. That's when you build compression. You're taking everything that's up here, your charge that's up here, and you're squeezing it into that small area. Not to get into it, but again, why you can't just raise your exhaust and not do any machining, you're going to lose torque. But if you don't think that that matters, take your top ring out once and take a compression reading. See what you come up with. Or take your ring out, your top ring out, and try to run your saw. You can take your bottom ring out. I do that on a lot of builds. Your top ring in relation to your intake opening, very important. If you think about it, you're taking in your intake charge and you're compressing at the same time on your upstroke. If, if your, uh, when your intake starts to crack open, if your ring is not above, you're, you're basically running a free flowing system. And yes, you can free port a saw that's on the exhaust side. That's a different deal. We're not going to get into that, but it is, this rule is, I would write this one in stone and I'm the one that tells you to try everything to break every rule. I'm telling you, this rule is very important. Let's take a 461. Remember how I told you that 200T, right out of the box, great running saw, is really close to that rule, right out of the box. So this is a 461. I've told you guys how many times the 461 stock, not the greatest saw. I think they're kind of a turd stock, and that's why when people get them back, they're blown away how they run. So I have that wire jammed in there, so let me do that again. Popped out. So this, I'm jamming this wire in here is basically is, it's making sure that it doesn't move. So right there, my intake is cracked open. You can barely start to see that bottom ring. So you have all that room. You can't even see the bottom ring yet. So you have all of that room. That's how I determine how I'm gonna do a build. I'll get a saw, I'll check this rule out. And then I'll say, holy smokes, I got that much room to go. Or if a saw's a good runner, I'll be able to tell you if a saw runs good or not just by looking at this. I swear to God, if, if I took a saw, I knew nothing about it. I looked at this and I, you know, I was foreign to this saw. I would do this rule and I would go, man, that saw's probably pretty torquey. This is what I would tell you about this cylinder right here. I'd say that saw's probably pretty torquey, but it probably doesn't have a lot of top end. It's probably not very snappy. That's how a, that's how a 461 runs. I'd take a 200T or let's just look at this cylinder. This is a cylinder I ported. And again, you don't even have to have the cylinder in the saw. So this is an 84 cylinder I ported. I'm gonna try to, hold on, I gotta go off camera to get this in here better. You can see what I'm doing. I got camera flashes like in my face, it's like blinding me. Okay, so you see how I'm pushing that rule? I'm right there. You can even go as far as having like half of the ring below the roof of your exhaust. So I push that as far as I can go, but if I'm gonna do a build, I'll see where I line up there, and then if I want more torque, I'll focus more on adding, lowering my intake more. Or if I want more of a top end ripper, I'll focus more on adding to, or raising the exhaust, and that'll give me more top end along with everything else. Everything else is relevant, everything else is still important, but that rule right there is the deep most important bit of two-stroke knowledge that I have, and I'm passing it on to you guys so somebody else doesn't waste their damn time like I did. This one really makes me mad. It's my own damn fault. I should have looked at this, but this this would never would have ran good out of the box. It will work. I will get it to work. I'm, I've looked at everything. I am going to put a 56 millimeter 064 cylinder on that 460 nitrous saw. I have to get a different one though. This this wouldn't have ran right out of the box. It's why I hate aftermarket. Probably why half these aftermarket cylinders don't work with the shit. That thing would never run good. Right out of the box. What a joke. 
my own fault. I should have checked. Hopefully that helps you. Again, I'll never ask this. If you like the videos or if you appreciate this, maybe other people have showed it. But this is, again, something I didn't know if I would ever share this. My gift to you guys, along with all the craziness I do, hopefully for your entertainment. Hope it helps. Stay rowdy, my friends. Mind that rule. See you next time.